an opportunity. Child, my wig is up. Well, tell me about it. I don't care. Y'all don't think this is my hair, do you? <laughs> do you think the woman with the issue of blood cared about her hair? Do you think the woman with the issue of blood cared about what she looked like? The woman, all right. I'm about to take it off. It ain't never. It ain't never. The incident involving Sarah Jakes Roberts' wig falling off during her sermon has sparked a lot of discussion and differing opinions. Some people view this event through the lens of scriptural interpretation and beliefs about the role of women in the church. Timothy 2, 12, is often cited by those who believe that women should not hold positions of teaching or authority within the church. This interpretation stems from a traditionalist view of biblical gender roles. Critics of Sarah Jakes Roberts argue that her actions contradict this scripture and see the wig incident as a sign of divine disapproval. You are not just a pastor, though. Like, you Sarah Jakes Roberts. Like, the, the girl's girl pastor. Like, the person that helps people so much that they feel like you are their sister, their cousin, their auntie, their friend. Like, like replay your sermons on moments where they decide they might not want to be here anymore. Yeah. Like that type of level of connection you have with people. How do you reconcile that? What is your viewpoint of that now? Well, the only reason why I continue to do it is because you can't hear a testimony like that message saved my life and got me out of depression and it helped me deal with the grief and to start my business and just like sit on that mm. you just can't sit on that like that's what i have to tell my on the other hand there are many who support sarah jakes roberts and believe that women can and should be able to preach and teach in the church they argue that the context and culture of the time when these scriptures were written differ significantly from today's world and that women have valuable contributions to make in ministry the discussion about appearance including wigs makeup and jewelry touches on broader debates within christian communities about modesty and authenticity some believe that adhering to natural beauty is more pleasing to god while others see no conflict between personal grooming and their faith there's a scripture in philippians 4 that i love and it speaks to the power of transmission philippians 4 6 through 7 it says be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. It speaks to the power of what happens when we take what we've been carrying to the Lord in prayer. When I take it to the Lord in prayer, I pour my heart out. And I say, God, this is what I've been carrying. God, this is what's been stored up inside of me. And when we lay it out before God, most of us just stop at that point and then we miss that the second part says that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds. There's something that happens. You pass on your burdens. You pass on what you've been carrying and then God passes you back something else. When I lay it out before God, a transmission takes place. Now all of, a, all of a sudden where I once had the potential to be anxious, I now have the opportunity to have my heart and mind guarded and to experience peace. That means that when I am in prayer, I am in pursuit of the things in my life which are taking up capacity that no longer have the right to be there. 
And in exchange, I am asking God to give me peace for the area where I once had anxiety. That God would give me peace for the area where I once had worry. That God would give me peace. Not just peace, the kind of peace that we have for a minute, but the kind of peace that guards my heart and mind. Why do I need a guard around my heart and my mind? Because if I don't have a guard around my heart and my mind, I may end up engaging again in the very thing that God, that I laid down in my prayer closet. And so I need a guard against my own heart and mind. It's important to recognize that interpretations of scripture can vary widely among different denominations and individuals. This diversity of thought reflects the complex and multifaceted nature of religious belief and practice. In this situation, the focus on the wig can distract from the broader and more meaningful discussions about gender roles, leadership in the church, and personal expression of faith. It's crucial to approach such topics with sensitivity and respect for differing perspectives. If I did not know that the hand of the Lord was on you, I would never do this. As Samuel's horn of oil, anointed David, I so anoint you. And with every drop of oil that falls upon your head, May the strength and the power of the Almighty God rest upon you, rest upon your life. Some interpret this scripture to mean that women should not teach or hold authority over men in the church. This view often leads to criticism of women like Sarah Jakes Roberts, who are in pastoral roles. Others interpret these scriptures differently arguing that cultural and historical contexts are important and that women can and should be involved in ministry. Those who oppose women in ministry may place blame on T. Jakes for ordaining his daughter, arguing that he is encouraging a practice they believe is unbiblical. Supporters might argue that D. Jakes is recognizing and nurturing his daughter's calling and gifts and that women have an important role to play in the church. Some believe that Christian leaders should avoid wearing wigs, makeup, or other enhancements, advocating for a natural appearance as a sign of modesty and authenticity. Others see personal grooming and appearance as individual choices that do not necessarily reflect one's spiritual state or effectiveness in ministry. The wig incident could be seen as an unfortunate distraction from the message being preached. For critics, it may serve as a symbolic failure or divine sign. For supporters, it might be seen as a human moment that has little to do with her spiritual authority or effectiveness. In conclusion, the incident highlights ongoing debates within Christianity about gender roles, biblical interpretation, and personal authenticity. It's a complex issue with passionate opinions on both sides, reflecting the diverse ways people understand and live out their faith.